I live in Hampton, Virginia. I've been working at the uh, Alcoa plant in Hampton right now for 24 years. And it's just getting harder and harder. I mean, I'm living in the same house I purchased 23 years ago. And it's getting harder for me to, you know, to pay the mortgage today than it was when I first moved in. You know, uh, like I said, our, our pay just hasn't kept up with the rising cost of just foods and services and paying utilities. And, uh, you, know, but, you know, because of that, you know, every week, you know, your money keeps running out before Friday gets back around. It's, it's, it's hard to believe when, when, when you work for a Fortune 500 company. You know, it's hard to believe that you, you make airplane parts, you know. You work in one of the biggest, you know, you know uh, uh, industries, you know, in the country, you know. In the air. We make parts for the government, for, you know, for the military. And, uh, and they, they pay the workers so little. As I listened to a lot of my co-workers uh, in the plants, you know, some of who I knew and some I, I, I didn't, as I listened to some of the little stories that they had to tell about what was going on, you know, and me, myself, having my own, I just felt the need that I need to get up and do something too. So I decided that, you know, that I would join in, you know, in helping them form this union. We were the ones, you know, the, uh, the steel workers, they, they told us that, that if it's going to happen, it's going to have to happen from within. I, myself, uh, along with a lot of my co-workers, we had formed an in-plant organizing committee. You know, and, and it was our job to go talk to our fellow co-workers. I, I think one of the first things that the organizers were telling us was to kind of go back in the plant and just get a feel for everybody. See how they feel about it, you know. Just start, start talking to everybody, you know. And, uh, and see are they, are, are they willing to try to you know, come together to form this union, you know, to kind of protect our jobs and, you know, and to kind of get us a voice at the table. You know. So you know, with all the decisions that were going on inside the plant that were affecting the employees, we felt like we didn't have no say so at all. And so that was the first thing that we did. You know, we, we went back and started talking to people and we got word that you know, a lot of people said, yeah, we do need to do something. You know, once we filed a petition, you know, once we achieved the, the number of cards, that the uh, steel workers required for us to be able to file a petition. Uh, that's when it, you know things really accelerated and you know, started going on real fast too. And the company brought in a lot of big corporate people. You know, uh, they would come in and talk to us, and you know they would do these big slide presentations and and just you know try to let you know make us believe that you know the union is just not the best thing for you. The biggest, probably the biggest advantage that the company had was that they could, they could take us, employees, each day and make us go to their meetings, look at their slides, listen to everybody that, you know, they could come to you on the floor each and every day and talk to you, you know, uh, about it. You know, you know, different supervisors, you know, you know, would go to you, talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, you know, talk to you in group meetings. And that was probably the biggest, you know, and, and, just, and just keep selling, uh, you know, a, a lot of that propaganda, you know, and uh, a lie. It's almost as powerful as the truth if I can get you to believe it. And unless you've ever experienced it, you know, for yourself, you know, unless you've ever walked it, you know, you, you can't even imagine how it is. Since that election, too, nothing has significantly changed at all about our pension. Nothing. It, well, it, it hasn't changed at all. Uh, our health care is, uh, is, is still rising. You know, you know uh, the retirees still don't have any health care benefits at all for retirees, uh, our pay is still not keeping up. I've even had conversations with, you know, like I said, with our plant manager, you know, and, and uh, other managers, and, and I've even told them, every, you know, laid everything out, and I've asked them, if you were in my shoes, what would you do? And they could you know, they couldn't even answer, you know, because they know that, you know, if they, if they didn't have no retirement, they didn't have no medical benefits when they retired, if their pay wasn't keeping up, you know, if, if, their, if their insurance premiums were constantly rising, you know, if they're, if, if they're constantly being asked to do more, you know, on the job, you know, what, what would you do, you know? And they, you know, and the answer is, you know, is, is obvious. I'd got to get me a union. I'd form a union. And, and it's, it's a right that's being violated by companies. Uh, yes, you know, and, and it's being violated by, by, by companies using intimidation, you know, you know, using fear. I think it would help balance things out for us as far as being able to uh, form a union. You know, because what, what ends up happening, I know when we tried the first time, you know, uh, 
when the company can sit people down each day, you know, you know, or every other day, and kind of just go back and forth with that, you know, that anti stuff, you know, those little scare tactics, you know, this could happen, that could happen, you know, if the people hear that enough, you know, this is, you know, they'll start to believe, it. you know. So I, you know, I, I believe that if if we could have another way to to, to form that, you know, union, you know. I, I think it would help us out a whole lot. I'm just waiting to see if this bill passes because if it does pass, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go, you know, go to work that next day. It'll level the playing field.